save flight hours and uh, flight hour program uh, and also to, to save money, there's a, an initiative to try to offload training into a simulated environment. The problem is that we don't have a quantitative way uh, to figure out just how good a simulator has to be in order to start to match the kinds of things that we get off of the live airplane. To give the pilot a better product, we need to be able to know where to put and apply the technology appropriately. The cognitive fidelity in synthetic environment, live virtual constructive experiment, is the virtual pillar that is taking objective data to determine what fidelity is needed to improve our carrier qualification training. So there are a number of different cues that a pilot is going to have available to them when they're flying a, a real airplane. So the airplane obviously moves, uh, so you've got motion cues. Uh, he's got his actual eyeballs, which is going to, to mean that the, the visual scene that he gets is at least as good as his eyes. He's got auditory cues uh, that are coming in. And then when he's looking out in the environment, the question that we're really trying to drive at is, if we don't model those aspects accurately, how does that impact the kind of training that pilot we receive in a simulator versus in the actual airplane. In the beginning of this experiment we did a care for a carrier qualifications. We were looking at which cues the experts and novices actually look at while they're flying on approach. Uh, whether that be the wake, the flaws, the different way the stick and throttle feel, all the different cues that they go through. In this experiment, we decided to change around the visual system and have motion or no motion on those types of cues. We've got uh, an EKG uh, system, and then in addition, within the cockpit, we've got an off-head eye tracking system. So we're not just monitoring how fast the heart is moving, but also uh, the particular dynamics of how the, the, the beat is changing over the course of the experiment. And then with the eye tracker, we're able to look at where the participant is looking within the cockpit, uh, but then also to get a, some sense of how organized their scan pattern is. So there's a relationship between how hard an individual is working and, and how random their scan pattern is. I thought what was interesting was the, the different attitudes between the, the novices and and the experts, and that's, that's to be expected to a certain degree. You got the expert pilots, they've had you know, three, four hundred traps, and they're being a lot more clinical about what they're looking at. They're kind of picking apart you know, details here and there. And some of the novices just, you know, they felt like it was, it was something different, it was something new. Going into the experiment, the pilots really don't know anything, except for the fact that they'll be taking part in the experiment, and they'll be uh, taking data and taking measurements. And it's important to keep that hush because you want to get honest opinions from them and you don't want to get everybody piling in on the same answers or getting swayed in one way or the other. One thing that we're trying to develop in this, uh, this experiment is a method for measuring what the, the impact of different fidelity cues would be. So, so the method itself uh, is one of the products of this. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at, uh, specifically with the motion and the visuals, is trying to come up with a set of guidelines uh, for simulator procurement down the road. We've got data that are beginning to suggest that you probably want to upgrade your visual system if you're going to pair it with the kind of motion that we've been providing here. We have the opportunity to supply the fleet with the best trainers on the ground to be able to save money. They can train on the ground, they can do most of their carry calls on the ground. It's safe, it's repeatable, and it's really only bounded by your imagination. But due to the improved technology that we have and due to, to the um, ability we have in, in this realm of simulation, we can give them that environment and give them the training up front rather than from the way forward in the real world in a safer people environment.